I thank you for inviting me to your Lenten series at your parish. My name is Father Richard Jones. I've been a priest 32 years, and the last three years I've been hospital chaplain at UPMC Mercy in Pittsburgh, which was founded in 1847 by seven sisters of Mercy from Dublin, Ireland in Bagot Street. Today at Mercy, there's two Sisters of Mercy, in particular, Sister Carolyn Schellenberger, who's been there for 61 years, and Sister Placidus McDonald, who's been there 56 years. So to combine, they have 117 years of caring and ministering to the sick, the suffering, and the dying. A great example to us all. My talk will be Lent, a time to retreat reflect, repent, and respond to the Spirit. I thank you for joining us. Let us begin in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today is the beginning of a journey, which we recall to us the deepest experience of human life, a six weeks pilgrimage on a path of resurrection victory over death, love's victory over injustice, healing's victory over pain. This is the Paschal path, and Jesus is the way, and find direction on our own Paschal path to connect ourselves step by step with the truth of what it means to be human and to be Christian. Begin again. Begin again to pray in your heart. Begin again to the call of friendship. Begin again to the knowledge that pain is part of life. Begin again to the sure hope of risen life. Begin again to walk with Jesus to be led on your path of life. Begin in faith, hope, and love. Lord, I offer you these weeks of Lent. May I know you, love you, and serve you. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The 8th century prophet Hosea a minor prophet, was profoundly influenced by his marital, marital experience with his wife, Gomer. She was perpetually unfaithful. They had three children, two sons and a girl, and yet he is undauntingly faithful. He will not abandon her. He will not forsake her. He will not leave her. Hosea means Yahweh saves. And so we read in these 14 chapters, in chapter 2, Hosea says, And so I am going to take her into the desert again, and there I will win her back with words of love. God seduces us, he entices us, he conjoles us, he allures us to come into the desert. Lent is a desert time of transformation. My family always goes at the end of July and or the first week of August when our parents got married and we spend our annual summer vacation at Bald Head Island in North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. And my brothers and sisters say, after we've been there for a while, are you on island time yet? We know what family time is, and prayer time, and work time, tea time for golfers, play time for teenagers, free time for children, quality time, for lovers, and downtime for leisure. Like 
Hosea and Gomer, faithful and faithless, faithful Yahweh and faithless Israel, God calls back to his heart, allures us back into desert time, a time of transformation. In Hosea chapter 14, return to the Lord your God, people of Israel. Your sin has made you stumble and fall. Return to the Lord. Let this prayer be an offering to Him. Forgive our sins and accept our prayer. And we will praise as we have been promised. Assyria can never save us. War horses can protect us. We will never again say to our idols that they are God. O oh Lord, you show mercy to those no one else will. The Lord says, I will bring my people back to me. I will love them with all my heart. No longer am I angry with them. I will be to the people of Israel like rain in a dry land. They will blossom like flowers. They will be firmly rooted like the trees of Lebanon. They will be alive in new growth and beautiful in olive trees. They will be fragrant like the cedars of Lebanon. Once again, they will live under my protection. They will grow crops of grain and be fruitful like a vineyard. They will be famous as the wine of Lebanon. The people of Israel will have nothing more to do with idols. I will answer their prayers. I will take care of them. Like an evergreen tree, I will shelter them. I am the blessing and the source of all blessing. May those who are wise understand what is written here. May they take it to heart. The Lord's ways are right. Righteous people live by them. But sinners stumble and fall because they ignore them. God is calling us to the silence, the stillness, the solitude of the desert, to our hearts. Forty days, as Jesus was thrusted out into the desert to face the adversary, Satan. Forty years, Israelites wandered in the desert and were transformed until they made it to the promised land. Whatever length of time in life, whether 40 days or 40 weeks or 40 months or 40 years, we can wander in confusing deserts. The desert was a time of harshness, of limitations, of barrenness. The desert was also a time of seeing what is essential. We've learned in this pandemic year what is essential, what is most important, offering up many things we've had to offer up in this difficult and painful time, whether it's the loss of a loved one to COVID, the loss of a job or the loss of a business, the loss of regular contact with people. The old Catholic tradition teaches us we have to offer it up, mortification, daily sacrifices. We had to offer up the sacrifice of pushing through fear, the sacrifice of wearing a mask, of social distancing to protect ourselves and to protect others, the sacrifice of missing birthdays and graduations and holidays and family get-togethers. Whatever the sacrifice, we offer it up to God as a gift of love. We've been in a desert time this last year with a deadly invisible virus, the coronavirus 19, it began in 2019. As a hospital chaplain, I saw on the front lines day in and day out that sometimes there was many as 90 patients in the hospital suffering, people dedicated and committed to serving them, doctors and nurses and medical staff, taking great risk, 
because of love's sake. How important it is that we know that during the desert time of Lent, Lent is a word that is from the Old English word meaning springtime. In Latin, lente, L-E-N-T-E, means slowly. Therefore, Lent points us to the coming of spring and invites us to slow down, to take stock of our lives, to prioritize them. By the solemn 40 days of Lent, the Church unites herself to the mystery of Jesus in the desert. In the Catholic Catechism, number 540, after praying and fasting, for 40 days, Jesus launches out in his public ministry for the inauguration of his mission, for the repentance of the sin and the dawning of the coming of the kingdom of God. During Lent, the Spirit too leads us into the mystery of Jesus' time. Isn't that what Lent is? Jesus' time into the desert to prepare for the triumph of, over sin and death to the glory of Easter Sunday. Lent is a time to, for us to look into our hearts at a mixture of grace and sin, light and darkness, angels and demons, good and evil. The church sets aside a new season each year for a period of desert time, for reflection and repentance to change our hearts. The church reminds us of our responsibilities towards God others and oneself. The choices that we make determine the course of our lives, who we are and what we identify with. Do we choose comfort or commitment? Do we choose ambitions or generosity? Do we choose self-serving or self-giving? Lent is a time to go back to the basics, the essentials, the fundamentals. Jesus reminds us on the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 6 on Ash Wednesday, verses 1 to 6 and 16 to 18, as he gives his teaching on charity, almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. Jesus asks us to embrace these spiritual disciplines and practices to grow and to flourish in our faith. The most important thing anyone can do for Lent is to heed the prophet Joel's call. Return to the Lord your God with your whole heart. Just like every prophet, Hosea, Jeremiah, Daniel, called the people back to the covenant. We are a covenant people of hesed love, merciful love, unrelenting love, undeserved love. The root of repent, metanoia in Greek, means to turn our lives around. Traditionally, Catholics have expressed sorrow for sin and their desire to live as genuine disciples of Christ through three Lenten disciplines. Through embracing the traditional Lenten triad of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, one grows in conversion and in holiness in life to put on the mind of Christ and the heart of Christ and the will of Christ and the life of Christ in being followers of Christ. These forms of self-denial to deny ourselves in a world that often finds its happiness in physical pleasure or in economic security or worldly power, these are our false self, our illusional self. The spiritual pillars of the hallmark of discipleship down through the ages of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving see Christ the source of all happiness. These three, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, are classical, meaning they are timely, and yet they are timeless. They are in time, and yet they transcend time. They are ever ancient, and yet ever new, spurring us to find a new and deeper meaning in life. Jesus did not say, if you pray, but when you pray. Not if you give alms, but when you give alms. Not if you fast, but when you fast. So clearly Jesus expects his followers to practice these disciplines 
actively Jesus desires, that we have true motivation and pure intentions for our prayer life, our almsgiving life, and our fasting life, which should dovetail in our love and devotion to God. Prayer is making time in friendship with the Lord in order to cultivate a relationship of love. There's so many sources that can strengthen our prayer life. For Lent, 40 days, the Easter Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, the Easter Tide of 50 days of Easter that leads us to the conspiracy of love of Pentecost. Beautiful handouts that you can be, look at. There's many wonderful prayer books, the Magnificat, Give Us This Day, Bishop Barron's The Lenten Gospels. There's so many different aids of spiritual vitamins that can increase and strengthen our prayer life during this holy season of Lent. I always go back to the true and tried. I always read during the season of Lent the imitation of Christ of Thomas a. Kempis over 500 years ago. It puts one into a deep identification of Christ, Christ crucified and Christ risen. Sister Joyce Rupp, Jesus friend of my soul, reflections for the Lenten journey is always a strong companion of mine. And the ageless confession of St. Augustine of the 5th century, who was always in touch with his sinfulness to know the mercy of God. St. Augustine said we shouldn't follow the crowd, we should follow the Christ. And oftentimes we're following the culture, we're following the crowd, we get off course and we need to follow Christ. And the way that we do best is always through prayer. To pray always. At Mercy Hospital at 9 o'clock each, each day, one of the chaplains offers a prayer over the PA system. So whether it's the morning time, daytime, afternoon time, or evening time, we're people of prayer. And I'm using for Lent this pray always, praying through Lent with the saints, beautiful meditations uh, to accompany those in the hospitals. I always give a prayer card to those that I visit in the hospital. Uh, and it's a prayer with Father Mark Link, a Jesuit. Lord, give me strength. Give us strength, Lord, when sometimes things get tough and we're ready to quit. Give us love, Lord, because sometimes people reject us and we're tempted to hate. Give us your eyes, Lord, because sometimes life gets dark and we lose the way. Give us your courage, Lord, because sometimes we, we're put under the pressure and it's hard to do what it's right. Give us yourself, Lord, because our hearts are made for you and they will not rest until they rest in you. In the hospital, I put this in each patient's hand and I say, the Lord is carrying your life at this time, whether a burden or a sorrow or a cross or an illness or a loss, the Lord is with you every step of the way. They need that encouragement and support, especially during times of weakness. We also pray the Stations of the Cross during Lent. There's different versions for those in prison, for those who are teenagers. At the hospital, we have the Stations of the Cross for healthcare workers and first responders, beautiful meditations. Our prayer life can increase, perhaps, in praying the Rosary. I'm sure if you pray the rosary each day, these 40 days of your life, I promise you, will change. Or Eucharist, Eucharistic Adoration. Archbishop Fulton Sheen said to pray the hour of power. That's the source of his strength and how important that is in a priest's life uh, because prayer must be the foundation which everything flows. Uh, at Mercy Hospital, at the end of the day, I always go to the Holy Family Chapel and I pray and I look over my roster of the names of the patients that I saw today and I call to mind that person and that name and that situation that they're, they were in, that the light of Christ may bring hope to them. 
So there's myriads of ways in which we can increase our, our prayer life. Lent is the time also to fast so that we have interior freedom to be free to deepen our relationship with God, which is the essence of our Lenten fast. Through almsgiving, we can fast in many ways. How important it is. There's a litany of Lent that we can fast from judging others and feast on patience. We can fast from apparent differences and feast on the unity of life. We can fast from words that pollute and feast on words that affirm. We can fast from complaining and feast on appreciation. We can fast from bitterness and anger and feast on forgiveness and mercy. We can fast from discouragement and feast on hope. We can fast from suspicion and feast on trust. We can fast from idle gossip and feast on a purposeful silence. We can fast from problems that overwhelm us and feast on prayer that strengthens us. This litany was from William Ward, who lived from 1787 to 1849. How important it is, ultimately, we can give up chocolates, or we can give up uh, desserts, or we can give up um, many different things. But the most important thing is it's to lead us to sorrow for sin, and to fast from sin, so that we can be interiorly free to follow Christ, who brings us to the great feast of our salvation. Through almsgiving, one expresses both love for God and love for neighbor. By freely giving to another, uh, God, we trust that God's providence, that God will provide through his beneficence, so that we can give cheerfully uh, to others. Maybe we have a poor box during Lent that we make, and then we give at the end to uh, those who are in need or indigent. At living downtown at Mercy Hospital, I always keep a few dollars in my pocket because inevitably uh, a vagrant asks, hey, Father, can you help me out? And so I don't want to be at a deficit, but uh, want to give how important it is uh, to give, to live to give, and not to get, not to take. Lent is a time for us to discover anew and afresh the gospel, the good news, that Jesus came to proclaim the dawning of the kingdom. The good news is a message of two parts. First, to repent. Metanoia, change your heart, a change of seeing things differently, a new direction, a fresh beginning. And then to believe in the good news. Before every gospel, we say, Lord, be on our mind, be on our lips, and be in our heart, that we may be converted, and the gospel may heal us and change us. Invite us to listen again, to bring change into the times in which we live. Sometimes we can be so complacent and too comfortable and fall into a trap of thinking we don't need God. One need is only to look at the cross this Lent to know that to follow the Lord requires sacrifice and suffering and a willingness to be committed, whatever the cost. The age-old message that Jesus preached to the crowds of Galilee at the dawn of his public ministry, the church echoes every Lent. Repent, change your ways, and believe in the good news. Humans are tenaciously stubborn and often proud. Our persistent sins and our small infidelities and our unruly passions can have a suffocating and deadly effect that can be fatal. So let us, this Lent, accept this time of testing to test our attitudes and our values, our beliefs and our life's goals. Let us embrace our daily crosses in union with Christ's cross. Let us give thanks for this faith walk to the desert of Lent 2021, before coming to the life-giving transformative waters of Easter. Let us embrace the time-tested spiritual disciplines down through the centuries of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to deepen our relationship with God and neighbor, and so prepare our hearts for the over overflowing joys of Lent, of Easter. 
Let us humbly repent of our sin, any sin that has hardened our hearts and removed from our lives things that are incompatible with our baptismal commitment to Jesus. And let us remember to put trust, faith, and love in Jesus into every day. I'm sure, as we know, the frigid winter will end and spring will come. As sure as we know the days will lengthen and the rising sun to its setting. As sure as we know the sun will warm our arms and air and the earth. We know the flowers will bloom and the grass and the trees will grow green. And we trust that the grace this Lent will touch and bless our souls. So, Lord, may this season of change of our hearts give us the grace to be your followers anew. There's many companions that I read to help me during to make this journey, but the way of silence is the way to transformation, to be still. We have 144 10-minute slots every day. I encourage you to make two 10-minute slots for prayer, for silence. Because when there's a decrease of silence in our lives, there's an increase of violence in our lives. So we need to be still in a world oftentimes where the interiority is diminished because we are drugged by technology we are perpetually busy we have inner, inner disturbances and sometimes we have overpacked suitcases or there's always one more message one more phone call one more text message one more email one more visit one more task to do and many things can be left undone, and we get disappointed. But in our pressure, in our busyness, in the noise, in our tiredness, we need to find solitude, to trust that God wants us to dwell with Him. As He woos us, maybe we need to unplug our phone this length, or the television, shut down the computer, silence the iPod, Lay away the sports page, or giving, having coffee with a friend, and look more deeply at the reality of where we are in our relationship with Christ. And so I encourage you at the end of Lent that it may be a remarkable Lent because you took prayer, fasting, and almsgiving seriously, and you sought to grow in a way like never before. I'd like to close with a prayer. In our Roman Missal, there's prayers before Mass and there's prayers after Mass. And this prayer comes from Pope Clement the Eleventh, who lived from 1649 to 1721. And I'd let this prayer, it's attributed to him, marinate your soul as we continue our Lenten journey 2021. Lord, may I believe more firmly. I hope, may I hope more securely. I love, may I love more ardently. I sorrow, may I sorrow more deeply. I adore you as my first beginning. I long for you as my last end. I praise you as my constant benefactor. I invoke you as my gracious protector. By your wisdom direct me. By your righteousness restrain me. By your indulgence, console me. By your power, protect me. I offer you, Lord, my thoughts to be directed to you, my words to be about you, my deeds to respect your will, my trials to be endured for you. I will whatever you will. I will it because you will it. I will it in the way you will it. I will it for as long as you will it. Lord, enlighten my understanding, I pray. Arouse my will, cleanse my heart, sanctify my soul. 
May I weep for my past sins, repel future temptations, correct evil inclinations, nurture appropriate virtues. Give me, good God, love for you, hatred for myself, zeal for my neighbor, contempt for the world. May I strive to obey superiors, to help those dependent on me, to have care for my friends, forgiveness for my enemies. May I conquer sensuality by austerity, avarice by generosity, anger by gentleness, lukewarmness by fervor. Render me prudent in planning, steadfast in dangers, patient in adversity, humble in prosperity. Make me, O Lord, attentive at prayer, moderate at meals, diligent in work, steadfast in intent. May I be careful to maintain interior innocence, outward modesty, exemplary behavior, and a regular life. May I always be watchful in subduing nature, in nurturing grace, in observing your law, in winning salvation. May I learn from you how precious are earthly things, how great divine things, how fleeting is time, how lasting things eternal. Grant that I may prepare for death, fear judgment, flee hell, and gain paradise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed Lent, joyous Easter to all. God bless you.